Susan Lawtonville with Kingsland Police Department and I um, have been with Kingsland for going on four years now and been a detective for about three years um, and I'm a member of the uh, Georgia Bureau of Investigation Internet Crimes Against Children Task Force and I'm also a Georgia Cyber Safety in, um, Initiatives presenter. ICAC itself um, starts out with some ba very basic training. You just want to learn a little bit about what the dangers uh, kids uh, can get into with the internet, uh, the predators that exist out there and how they gain access to our kids. So uh, I was taught how to engage in undercover chats and um, uh, without leading people. Um, there are a lot of people out there who will chat and despite being told that they're talking to a uh, underage uh, juvenile, you know, if I would tell them I'm 14 years old, I would repeat it. They didn't seem to care. I would be talking to a 40, 50 year old man and it didn't matter to them. Uh, they would uh, engage the conversation in a sexual manner. Um, and a lot of times what that, the goal with that is, I don't want to say the goal, but um, you get travelers and they will start seeking out how can I meet you, where can I meet you, and things like that. Uh, that um, sort of lost its uh, pizzazz, if you want to say, with the, To Catch a Predator. Uh, a lot of the people that I was chatting with were very, very leery about whether or not I was law enforcement, um, and they would just sort of disappear uh, off the screen, basically, over the course of time. They absolutely are still gaining access to our kids. The uh, social networking sites have become a huge um, uh, area for them to get access to our kids. Uh, the, they still have chat rooms. Those still do exist. Uh, you can, Facebook has its own version of chat room um, that they can chat back and forth. Our kids have a tendency to friend every single person that asks them to be friends without knowing that person personally. Um, uh, they'll ask for pictures of the child, nude. They, they just, they'll, what they'll do is they'll groom them, basically. They'll convince them that they're friends, that they are, that's, they're the only person that cares about them. You know, their family life is, is messed up and uh, the, the child or the teenager will tend to like that attention and um, they'll do eventually what that person asks them over the camera. My biggest word of caution to any of our kids that have a Facebook page, don't friend everybody. Unless you know that person uh, personally by face, um, have a uh, almost almost a daily interaction with them, do not friend them. Um, to me, if you look at a child who has 700 friends, I mean, practically speaking, what 12-year-old knows 700 people? Um, unfortunately, we're in a day and age when our kids are so desperate for attention and friends. They want that immediate feedback that, you know, what's good in their life, and they'll seek it from anybody at this point in time. If the, chair, if the children have told their parents and the parents are very concerned, if uh, I have some parents who have actually tried to engage that person themselves, you know, by questioning, who are you, what are you trying to do, you know, have communication with my child, if that person doesn't respond, I have had parents and grandparents who have come to me and said, hey, this person is on Facebook, has made contact with my child, and, um, you know, depending on what kind of contact, it may not have crossed a line at that point in time, but there is a concern. So I have monitored some Facebooks. Uh, you can look at them and see if somebody who's got some kind of pseudonym, so to speak, will have every friend that they have is, say, a middle school cheerleader. I have seen that on occasion. Monitor, I try to monitor their walls, what communication is going on. I'll also notify, you know, the, parents or whatnot through Facebook honestly and say hey your child has this person as a friend and just want to let you know that you know kind of keeping an eye on that person. I'll talk a little bit about the um, the child pornography stuff that I'm seeing with uh, teenagers and things like part of what I do with ICAC as well now is the what we call peer-to-peer -peer, the sharing of child pornography. Um, I've made about 10 arrests in the last year, a little more than a year, uh, for possession of child pornography. And what I, my biggest concern, what I see, is that these kids are talked into, uh, it's very obvious that they're talked into taking their clothes off uh, via webcam um, and performing, so to speak, for whoever's on the other side of, of that chat session that they're doing. Uh, another concern is the teenage girls and or boys who are taking pictures of themselves via the cell phone. They call it sexting. Um, 
they'll take a picture, a nude picture of themselves, send it to their boyfriend and or girlfriend thinking it's just between them. The relationship goes south and whoever's on the, uh, the offended end of that party will take that uh, photo and or video and just distribute it out. Uh, my biggest concern is if they're under the age of 18, that is production of child pornography, if uh, they have it on their phone or any technology whatsoever, it's possession, uh, you know, they, they have it. Uh, and if they send it out, it's distribution. All of those are felonies. Each one is a minimum five years to 20 years to serve with up to a $100,000 fine for each and every one of those. What you want, what you want, what you want. What you gonna do? What you gonna do when